Hello friends. So today uh, we are going to discuss about one of the very important object oriented programming concepts which is aggregation and how we could implement aggregation with entity framework co. So as you all know entity framework is an object relational mapper or in other words ORM. So an ORM will abstract the data access layer with the actual physical database. Okay. So let's see how we are going to implement aggregation with entity framework co. Right. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss today. Let's first get to know what aggregation is in object oriented programming. Uh, then we'll look at a case study or a practical scenario. And then we'll see a demo of implementing aggregation with entity framework core. Yeah, so let's first get into the introduction. So what is aggregation? Right? Aggregation is a object oriented programming concept which will depict a has a model relationship. Right? You all know in object oriented programming that there are various relationships. Right? There is association relationship there is inheritance relationship and this is another relationship aggregation which will depict a has a model relationship so if we are to have a relationship we need two parties right so in this has a model relationship we have a parent and a child right parent class and a child class, right? So the aggregation or the has a model relationship lies between a parent and a child class. Okay. So in other words, we can say that the parent owns the child. This owns word is very important. Parent owns the child or the child is owned by the parent. Okay. Or the child is a part of parent. Right. So let's take a real world example. I'm sure most of you all have done online shopping in eBay or Amazon.com or any other shopping cart website. So finally, once you're happy with the uh, items that you have picked right you are going to check out in that situation right once you check out from the site a purchase order is created now in this purchase order right uh, the address information of you right you are the customer right and in the purchase order, right, the address information is a part of that purchase order or purchase order owns the customer address information or the customer address information is owned by the purchase order, right, mainly the delivery details of the customer. Okay, so uh, that is one of the real world examples that you can think of aggregation, right? Okay, so if we take the same shopping cart example that I have just explained, right? 
if we are to implement it maybe in a uh, web application scenario right so you have this shopping cart website it can be implemented in any of the front end technologies and then we have a web api which will handle the back end uh, request and finally the web api will transform the request into the data access layer now as you can see we are going to implement the data access layer with entity framework so basically entity framework will abstract the uh, CRUD operations, main CRUD operations from the data access layer that we do against the underlying physical database. Okay, so that is the main advantage of entity framework usage where most of the database related tasks are now can be done within few lines of code and can be issued targeting the relevant physical database from the data access layer uh, in a very easy manner. Why? Because the entity framework itself is an object relational mapper which will abstract the underlying uh, operations or the tasks such as CRUD operations which can be issued to a physical database via the data access layer. Right. Okay. So, I'm sure you have got a basic idea of what I'm going to achieve today. So, this is what I'm going to show you in the demo as to how we could implement aggregation with entity framework. So for example, take the scenario, customer makes a purchase order with address information. Okay, let's get into the demo. Right, now I have already opened Visual Studio. So for this demo, I'm going to use uh, .NET Core, right? ASP.NET Core empty project, okay? ASP.NET Core empty project with C sharp, right? Uh, then let me select the uh, location, right? So let me name this project uh, implementing. aggregation implementing aggregation right okay so <clears throat> let me uh, just select the folder itself right entity framework let me just select the folder itself. Okay. And provide the uh, project name as implementing aggregation. Okay. Right. Now, Let's untick HTTPS and I'm going to work with .NET 5, okay, .NET Core 5, which is .NET 5, right. Okay. Right. So, uh, I'm going to actually uh, show you first uh, 
how to add a class library right dot net co class library for that right click on the solution add new project and i have already got a template here but let's take a class library class library dot net co a project that creating a class library that targets dot net standard or dot net co okay let's take this one okay and i'm going to name it data access right okay so let's first delete this class okay now in order to work with entity framework okay we need certain uh, new get packages to be added right i'm sure you guys have come across this so let's add the relevant new get packages required for the implementation with entity framework so this is the option of adding new get packages okay right click on the relevant project dot net co class library project and manage new get packages this is the option to do that okay right now there are three uh, packages that we have to add first is the microsoft entity framework co package since i am using dotnet co 5 i am going with the latest version of uh, the version 5 which is 5.0.17 and let me install it okay and then i am going to install entity framework co sql server Okay, and then finally, since I'm going to use the code first approach of entity framework, uh, I'm going to use entity framework code tools to create the relevant migrations. Microsoft entity framework code tools. Let me install that also. okay so we are done installing the relevant packages so let me uh, first create the relevant entities so for that right click on the project add new folder and create the entities so we'll add purchase order class and the address class so first of all we'll add the address class right click on the project and add new class that is how you're going to add a class so public address and for the interest of time i have already typed the code right so i have all these properties here and there is one important data annotation that we have to use which is owned right this is a very important data annotation which says that this class can be owned by a owner in other words the order class that we are going to create will own the address class or will have a reference to the address class I will show that to you practically for for the moment just understand that this or uh, that this address class is decorated with the owned data annotation attribute which says that this class 
can be owned by another parent class this class can be owned by another parent class which is the owner which is the owner okay so let's find out who is the owner okay so let's create a order class okay public class order So we have the order class. I will add the relevant properties here and explain one by one. Right. Okay. Right. Now this order class as you may have seen it has a primary key which is the id property how we are going to know that it is a primary key we have decorated it with the key data annotation attribute and as you may have seen the order class has several properties like customer email the date of ordering the subtotal the status of the order right and there you go the order class has a reference to this owned class so the order class is the owner and the address is the owned class so in other words order class has a address aggregation relationship order class has a address address is a part of order okay so that is the that is how the aggregation relationship is built now if you go to the address class which i have added with ship to address property if you go to the address class you will see this owned property right whenever we decorate a class as owned okay it means that it is going to be part of another entity okay address will be going to uh, stay as a part of order or address will be owned by order okay there uh, therefore right we will not be creating this address class as a separate entity or a table in the database we will have this address information as a part of the order table or the order entity so i hope it is clear for you uh, because of the fact that we do not have a separate address entity or a table in the physical database we will not be having a id property in the address class instead we will keep the address information as a part of the order table or the order entity itself because the order is the owner of the address or address is owned by the order that is how the aggregation relationship is built between order and address right now we have added the new get packages and we have added the relevant uh, entity classes let's add a db context class to create the database or the physical database with entity framework code first approach for that i am going to add a class called store context okay. this is just a basic demonstration of the data access layer so our focus mainly goes into the data access layer right for the interest of time i have added this code here 
and I will explain. First step is to inherit from the DB context class. Okay. There you go. Now, uh, this DB context super class has a virtual method which is on configuring which can be overridden in this store context class. It's a protected method which is only available for the subclasses of DB context, which in this case the subclass is store context, so that I am allowed to override the on configuring method and I am going to uh, have just one entity or a DB set. As I said earlier, we will not be having a separate entity or a table created in the physical database for the address uh, class. So we will have we'll be having only one order uh, entity. And where are we going to create our database so that we can have this orders table? So I have mentioned my connection string here, right? You can even mention the connection string in a config file, which is the best practice. But for the moment, I have mentioned it in this uh, place itself. This is my local database server name. And the database that I'm going to have is my store. And this is the uh, and uh, this is the integrated security true, which means uh, I'm going to use Windows authentication. Okay, right. Finally, we are going to create the uh, migration, right? For that, for that, I am going to use package manager console. We have to click here and package manager console. I have to select the default project as data access. Okay. And then let's see how it goes. We have to use the add migration command to create a migration file. Okay, so it gives an error like your startup project implementing aggregation does not reference entity framework code design. This package is required for the entity framework code tools to work. Ensure your startup project is correct. Install the package and try again. Now, as our focus is mainly on to uh, implementing the data access layer, let me temporarily delete this uh, project entirely from the solution and give a build. Because currently we are not in focus of implementing any web api or anything like that we are simply focusing on implementing the data access layer okay so let's try again right there you go now with the add migration uh, command okay we were able to create the migration class now let's see the migration class as you can see in the orders table orders table i have the address properties also within the orders table itself okay and that is how the aggregation is uh, implemented finally i'm going to use the update database command okay so the migration has been applied so let's see whether our database has been created so this is my local database i'm going to refresh there you go we have the my store database and we have the table orders table and we have the relevant properties address first name last name street city state zip code 
likewise all the address information is part of the orders table and that is how we have implemented the concept of aggregation with the use of uh, entity framework okay so i hope this uh, tutorial uh, has been useful for you and you were able to learn something out of it right so if you found this tutorial useful please like subscribe to my channel and connect with me for future uh, sessions and if you have any comments you can also mail me uh, with the mentioned mail address learn with rushan at gmail.com okay so let's meet soon till then uh, goodbye happy coding thank you